Hey guys, Zelonius here. Happy Christmas. Well, almost Christmas. Christmas tomorrow. Happy Christmas Eve though. Appreciate you guys tuning into this video. In this video today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about 10 top tips that are going to help you have a better FIFA experience, help your club be better, help you get more wins, and just in general, hopefully enjoy the game a bit more. The first tip that we're going to talk about is chemistry. So chemistry is something that I honestly don't think it's too complicated. I feel like it's a little bit more complicated than the previous chemistry system because obviously we got a new one this year. Um, simply put, players get up to three chemistry. You can see the triangles um, at the bottom left of their cards. The way they get chemistry is either by linking to players of the same nation, same club, or same league. So if they're the same club, they're obviously going to be the same league as well. And then on the far left under the total chemistry, you can see how the chemistry works there. I'm not going to go in depth about chemistry on this video. I'm just trying to say for this video that chemistry is really important. Chemistry is something that I don't think people take enough notice of. Um, if your players are not in good chemistry, it can drastically affect their performance. Like if we look at someone like Pedro here, he's getting 8 pace, which is a lot. And then 12, 16, 24, 39 stats worth of defensive boost. Purely by having full chemistry. If they have two chemistry, they get 50% of that. If they have one, they get a quarter of that. So the chemistry really does matter. Getting your players on good chemistry is going to make a huge difference, especially earlier on in the game. Later on in the year, chemistry won't matter as much as we start to get players who have near max stats anyway. But for now, um, even a few months in, it's still really important. Number two top tip we're talking about is having a game plan. So many people don't have a consistent game plan. This is my 4 2 3 1 tactic. Um, you can see there, I'll show you probably my favorite one that I'm running at the moment. I'm pretty sure it's this one. I have weird team names and stuff, so. Yeah, I'm running 4 2 2 at the moment. My favorite two formations are 4 2 and 4 3 3. But I find the 4 2 has been working well for me lately. Um, for the 4 2, you can see here I've got. A balanced one, I've got a press after possession loss, I've got a constant pressure, I've got a drop back. Having a game plan so you can switch in-game quickly um, based on what the score is, is going to be important and going to help you to get more wins. Number three, using the store properly. Now this is more important than ever on FIFA 23. So many people, so many people, yeah, so many people don't properly do this. Um, there's... Just This is a simple thing in itself. You get a preview pack every day. This is basically a pack you do not have to buy that you can open. Don't be wrong. Nine times out of ten, you are going to get a pack that's useless. But if you get a pack that's worth more than the 7,500 coins it cost, you can... Um, it's annoying. I would have liked to have uh, been able to open that... Uh, where is it? 81. I'd like to open the 81 to 83. But yeah, if you get a pack... There, that's worth more coins than it costs. You can open it and keep doing that. Do that every day. You never know what you might get from it. On previous FIFAs, the promo packs were pretty irrelevant because they always stay at the same price. But this year, EA have been occasionally putting in some really good deals. So, like, normally, a Jumbo Rare Player Pack costs 100,000 coins. I've seen them do it for, like, 35,000 coins in the promo pack. They've got one here. Like, if you're going to spend money on the game... Spend it on the offers that EA do. They've not done this on previous FIFAs. So it's good to see that they're starting to actually do it now. Um, check in regularly every day and see what they put on here. Enjoying certain promos. They might put tokens in here that work towards some of the uh, swaps. So you need to keep an eye on that. And then if you like cosmetics, they put plenty of stuff in here. I got the um, like Santa Christmas outfit kit. So yeah, fun little stuff like that. Number four is using your club's transfer list properly. Not a lot of people know about this, but when you go to the transfer list, if you click the left stick in, you can properly search through your club like this. This is the easiest way to very quickly sell players in your club. So you can quickly do this. There's lots of different filters you can do there. You can left click again to get an advanced filter to see all this. This is the easiest way if you want to quickly sell a lot of players to do it. So many people never even know this is a thing and they end up taking a lot longer waste in their time when they're sorting out the club. But it's a really useful little system that I think EA should make it a bit more obvious. Number five, regularly check SBCs. 
Now, I, I might do a video about this, but I feel like EA are really tr going a long way towards making this a fully untradeable game. I could be wrong on that, but a lot of the things they do seem to suggest that. Um, these SBCs tend to always be untradeable, but quite often S untradeable SBCs tend to be better value. Some A lot of these SBCs tend to be pretty rubbish, but quite often there will be some pretty good ones. Um, you can even get like the tokens in here that go towards swaps and things like that. So you need to keep an eye out for all that. But keep an eye out for the tokens and um, players that they put in here. There might be someone that perfectly fits your team. There might be um, an SBC that's super good value to get a pack. You get the swaps and all that in here. A lot of people uh, probably don't even keep a proper eye on this. And sometimes EA make a mistake and put an SBC that's super cheap. A lot cheaper than it should be. Um, in general, I think the SBCs aren't always the best, but it's a pretty good way to use your duplicate and tradables and get some good stuff. Number six, it's following on about SBCs, is avoid doing the rip-off SBCs. So, for example, I would love to recommend to do, but this flashback Ronaldo, as good a card as he is, is not worth doing. Remember what I said about chemistry? He is not going to be able to get chemistry. <coughs> He's not going to be able to get chemistry very easily. He doesn't have a league or a club to strong link him to anyone. He literally just has the Portuguese League and the World Cup League. Or Portuguese Nation and World Cup League. Hardly anyone's going to link to him with that. And the card was over 500k. If you are considering doing a card on here, compare him to a tradable card. So this Ronaldo is not as good as Neymar overall in my opinion. And when you compare the two... Um, Neymar is definitely a bit better. And Neymar's less than half the price. And tradable. Yes, you might sometimes do an SBC just because you really, really love the player. I get that. That is fair enough. But I would, generally speaking, always try to avoid doing SBCs that are a rip-off. That are there to drain your coins. EA don't want you to have coins. If you lose coins, you're more likely to spend money on the game to get coins. It's a pretty simple equation. Number seven is regularly check the objectives. So it's a new season that they've just added. The season two just finished. There's plenty of different stuff in here. You can see this if you complete the daily login upgrade. You can get loads, all sorts of good packs. Lots of little stuff that EA are doing. Um, I feel like they've definitely put more of an emphasis this year on um, some actual rewards for stuff, which is better. I'm not a fan of the gameplay this year, but I feel like some of this stuff that they're working towards has definitely been better. And you can see here, um, this is a way to get winter wildcard tokens. Um, checking the objectives. There might be some really good players in here that you didn't even realise um, about and that can help you stock your club up, improve your team. Uh, might be a player that really suits your team in there. So keep an eye on objectives. Then obviously we've got the season progress. I feel like the season progress rewards are just awful in general, but you might get something from them or you might like the cosmetics in there. Uh, are we on number seven now? Well, I think we're on number eight now. Number eight, perfect timing, is get your eight weekly wins in rivals. So <clears throat> you can see here on the rewards, three wins gets you some rewards, eight wins gets you more. If you're not that bored about playing the game loads during the week, it's still worth trying to get your eight wins. Like if you're in the elite division and you get eight wins, you get a team of the week player plus a jumbo rare player, a rare player pack. And they also give you champs points towards qualification. So if you're struggling to get into champs or get the points to play in the champs playoffs, the weekly wins can help a lot towards that. Number nine, having super subs. So this kind of comes back to the game plan thing we talked about. But a lot of people never even make a sub in Ultimate Team. It's not as big a deal in Rivals. In Rivals, you are not going to need subs as anywhere near as much, I don't think. Simply put, 90 minutes players don't tend to get too tired on this game. But if you go to extra time, having some pacey subs is going to make a huge difference. And I think uh, go a long way. Go a long way to helping you get more wins. And then number 10... More of just a fun one. This isn't really going to make a big difference to your team, but I guess they say look good, play good. The stadium section, you can see here all sorts of ways to customise your club. So the club's where you pick all the kits and stuff. Let's get that Santa kit in. Where is it? I bought it yesterday, so 
There we go. This I remember this kit years ago um, on FIFA, so it's, it is a pretty cool flashback, to be fair. We got it, yeah. You can customize all sorts of stuff in your team here. I don't actually use uh, in game sound, so I don't mess around with that. But you can change all sorts of stuff like TFOs, backgrounds of your stadium. There's a lot you can do with it, and I think that it's actually a pretty good thing EA added over the last few years. Don't think it's like game changing growth, but it's a nice little fun thing you can do. It can make your ultimate team, your stadium, feel a little bit more personalized to you. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Hopefully, it has helped you. As always, if you guys ever have any videos you would like to see me do, please do let me know. I appreciate the support of the channel. We've grown a lot over this year. Thank you for supporting me throughout 2022. Hope you guys have a great Christmas if you celebrate. And just a great time with your family in general. As always, peace. I'll catch you guys in the next one.